thank you thank you lord jesus we are grateful 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 thank you as individuals thank you thank you lord jesus let the lord my soul was thank you for your good just forever thank you lord jesus for your mercy and just forever over our lives we bless your name lord jesus for being so good to us for being so kind to us for being so intentional about us god we bless your name god we bless your name god we bless your name the bible says oh give thanks unto the lord for his good and his mercies and yours forever we bless your name for you are good and your mercies and yours forever your mercies they endure forever mm -hmm is everlasting even to all generation thank you lord jesus we bless you 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 with all of our being the depth of our souls we say thank you for us thank you for being so intentional about us thank you for being so intentional about us thank you for being so intentional about us thank you Ever and ever, ever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jes
Amen. So I want us to pray right now. We are praying to God for strength. It is important that we ask God for strength, actually. Because the Bible says His grace is sufficient for us and His strength is made perfect. So it means that without the strength of God, we are it would not be all that he intends for us to be. So it means that without the strength of God, we are the vilest offender. So it is the strength of God. God strengthens us to be able to do. The Bible says he works in us to be able to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So we're going to be praying together right now that, Lord, we ask that you strengthen us tonight. We ask for strength. We ask for strength. Can we lift up our voices and begin to ask God for strength? That, Lord, we ask that you strengthen us as individuals. We ask that you strengthen every member of the tribe tonight. We ask that you strengthen us in the name of Jesus. Oh, strengthen us. We ask for strength. Oh, for those that wait upon the Lord, He renews their strength. They mount up with wings as eagles. They run. They are not weary. They walk. They do not faint. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask you for strength tonight. That we are strengthened. We are Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. 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 One more prayer point. According to our theme for the month, which is restoration of divine image, the Bible says in the book of Third John, um, verse two, um, Apostle um, John was speaking here. John, they call him the elder. He was speaking here, and he said, "Behold." Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. It shows that it, it shows the correlation or the relationship between health and prosperity. I mean, a man that is that has so much money but does not does not have good health is as as good as a man that has nothing. Because health, we have always heard it that health is wealth, health is wealth. So even as the um, marketplace been 
this as we are coming to understand the importance of health we are, we are coming to understand how important it is for us to have this health 100 percent perfection of health so we're going to be praying tonight that lord jesus we ask oh god that you strengthen us and you restored every health that has been lost is there anybody that's going through a health challenge or the altar that lord we ask oh god that by your mercy tonight you restore you restore you restore in the name of jesus because god's will for us is that we be in good health we live in good health we live in fullness of health and we live so long void of sicknesses void of diseases that we live so long void of everything that that, that would not make us live perfectly in health so can we begin to pray right now that in the name of jesus i decree and declare over my life that I am in good health. Oh, is there anything that is not not right with my health right now? I ask, oh God, that by your mercy you restore, you restore me to the original state, the original version, the original plan for, for my life, and <laughs> Amen. Madam Bridget. Okay, I don't think she's on the call. Oh, okay, ma. Mm. Can right. you go on? Yes, please. Okay, ma. Right. So we're still going to be praying. I realized that every place in the scripture or in the New Testament where Jesus found somebody that was sick or somebody that was possessed or somebody that, that, that had something to do with you. The Bible says, and Jesus would always say, and Jesus had compassion. So it means that it is the healing flowed from that compassion of Jesus. And that's why Blind Bartimaeus would say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. More like, have compassion on me. So it means that in his compassion, he heals our diseases, he heals our sicknesses. And funny enough, this thing has happened. This healing had already happened many, many years ago when he hung on the cross. So it means that as Jesus hung on that cross, as he was beaten, as he hung on the cross, it means that we were, we, we were hung on that cross too. So it means that everything that is contrary to the will of God for our lives also hung on that cross that day Jesus died. So it means that he died so that I could live. And not just live, but live in fullness of life, live in fullness of health. So it means that he died so that I could I could live life void of sicknesses, void of diseases, live life to the fullest completely. So we're going to be praying from that standpoint of understanding i'm going to be decreeing and declaring once again that in the name of jesus i walk I, I walk in alignment according to the will of God concerning my health in the name of Jesus. Sometimes people people are healthy and before you know it, one sickness or the other just creeps in and they are spending all that they have, they are spending all their money. And at the end of the day, sometimes they cannot even find the, 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 they cannot find where this thing is coming from. For example, I had an aunt that passed away, was it last year? And this woman was, I, I, in fact, when she died, honestly speaking, I was, I, I, I kind of felt a bit happy. Though I was sad, I was happy because she had gone through so much pain in life, so much pain regarding her health. So I felt like, okay, let this woman even go and rest, right? But I got to realize and understand that, ah, no, 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 no. The will of God for us is not to go through life going from one hospital to another, going from one place to another, seeking seeking one medication or another, because Jesus already paid the ultimate price for us. So when he died, he did not just wash away our sin or died to set us free. He set us free from everything, everything from the cause of the law, including sicknesses. So can we begin to pray and 
the cry again till it comes into our consciousness and in the name of jesus i walk in the reality of of the sacrifices christ paid for me on the cross regarding my health in the name of jesus i refuse to be sick i refuse to go through health challenges i refuse to go through problems with my health in the name of jesus i walk in alignment with all that god has spoken concerning me and concerning my health in the mighty name of jesus only jesus has the final say over my life can we just begin to confess these words and say in the name of jesus i am healed i am all in the name of jesus i walk in the in the name of Rise <laughs> Amen. Amen. So um I want to I want to read from the book of Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. That's the story of of the woman in the issue of blood. Mark chapter 5, five four. Um, the Bible says, and there was a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not in bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his, his clothes, I shall be old. The Bible says that, and straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the story goes on and on and on. And he said, Your faith has made you whole. I also believe that this woman was not the only one that was around Jesus that day. She was not the only woman that was in need, desperate need for health, for, uh, uh, for restoration of health. She was not the one. I'm not the only one I'm, because the bible records i think it was this account or another account that there were crowd about jesus and this woman said if only i may but touch the hem of his garment or oh, what level of faith did she have i said if i may but touch the hem of his garment i will be made whole and then the bible records that immediately immediately she was healed immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up so it took an audacity of faith for this woman to say ah if i touch i don't need him to lay his hands on my head i don't need him to to to, to speak words over my life i do not even need him to, to point out to me and say i ah, do this woman you have this you have that all i need to do is to touch the hem of his garment i just need to touch it then after that i know for sure that i would be made whole i know that there are many of us our families or even ourselves or friends that are in need of that are in desperate need 
need of healing from Jesus, like this woman with the issue of blood in the book of Mark chapter 5. So I want us to pray and intercede on this altar tonight for everyone that is going through one health challenge or the other, that we, as many there are that we can remember. But she said, if only I may but touch the hem of his garment. We are here together tonight, praying in fellowship, praying in one accord. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. So I want us to generate so much power, make so much power available to evil tonight. And we send this power because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. We send this power to we send this power that we generate to everyone around us that might be in desperate need of, of healing right now. So I want us to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. First of all, let's pray in the Holy Ghost, knowing fully well that we're building so much capacity and power in the spirit, and we're sending this to our family members, our friends, our relatives that may be in desperate need of help, like this woman. Manda casa pro mundo com sublime nome, 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 Deni mana ke sublen deni mamba manda ka sablon mono ko sublen deni mamba manne ke sublen deni mamba na ka sablen deni mamba manda ka sablon mono ko sublen deni mamba manne ke sublen deni mamba manda ka sublen deni mamba deni mana ke sublen deni mamba manda ka sablen deni mana ke sublen deni mamba manda ka sablon mono ko sublen deni mamba Man make it sublime, deni mamba. Deni mene ke sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime, deni mamba. Deni mene ke sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime, mono ko sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime, deni mamba. Deni mene ke sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime, deni mamba. Deni mene ke sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime, mono ko sublime, deni mamba. Man na ka sublime. Deni mamba, deni mene ke sablen deni mamba, mane ke sablen deni mamba, mana ka sablo. Amen, amen. So we are praying a, a, a scripture dropped in mind, and that's the book of Psalms, Psalms twenty-three. The Bible says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." It makes me lie down in green pastures. It leads me beside still waters. It restores my soul. So it means that we do not just need restoration of health in our bodies. It means that we need restoration of health, maybe in, with our emotions, in our soul, in our spirit, whatsoever area. So it, it, it means that our health is not just restored in our body physically, but in every ramification of our life. The Bible says it heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. So it means there are certain people that need restoration of health in their emotions, with their emotions, in their soul, in their spirit. So we're going to be praying, according to the book of Psalms 23, that he, he restores my soul. You see, there is, there is I, I believe that there is an original there was an original intention of God regarding our lives and our soul, right? So he restores our soul to that to that childlike childlike way it should be to that way it should be it restores our emotions most of us have gone through life and we have faced so many disappointments we have been broken at it we have been we have been scarred we have been injured from so many things in our lives so right now tonight there is a restoration of health in our emotions in our soul in our spirit not just our body so can we begin to pray right now that in the name of jesus it restores our soul it restores our emotions in the name of jesus oh we have for restoration of divine health oh shatele Oh, 
the final prayer point before I hand over to Madam Akudo. Um, I want us to pray for the vessels God will be using to bless us tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God speaks to us through them. There is a word in season that can come for us and just for us. I mean, there are people, including myself, that are waiting for specific words tonight that God would speak through his vessels tonight. And not just that, that, that our eyes are open to see, our ears are open to hear, our hearts are open to understand all that God would have us here tonight, that we are not distracted, we are not weary, the word of God comes in season to us in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to pray? And in the name of Jesus, as I listen to God's word tonight, I am energized, I am healed, I am all, I am strengthened in the name of Jesus. And that God, you speak through the vessels you will be using for us tonight. He speaks the word in season to us. Yes, the Lord speaks the word in season to us. No one is permitted to come to this altar and live here in the name of Jesus. No one is permitted to come and live here to still with everything. Words that would be spoken. Oh, that you speak our deep words to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our hands are open to see, our ears are open to hear, our hands are open to understand all that you can say to us tonight in the name of Jesus, and that we are not void of understanding, that we are able to understand and comprehend all that we want to tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless your name and give you praise. For in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, um, Wisdom, for that powerful session. And um, just as you led the last prayer points, um, I think the Lord was just ushering us into the message that He has for us today that he has given me. But before then, Father, we just say thank you for today. We are grateful for yet another opportunity to uh, glean from your words. We are grateful for your grace upon our lives. We are grateful, oh God, for this seed that you are planting in our hearts. For some, it's a seed. For some, you are, it's a watering. And um, for some, this is the point of harvest or fruitfulness for them whichever level we are on oh god father i pray oh god that we receive that which you desire to give us i commit myself to you and everything that you desire to use to deliver this message lord we say thank you for in jesus name we have prayed amen okay so this is um another yet another teaching on the restoration of divine health and um, I'm grateful to God by the help of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a brief message because I'm sharing this wonderful slot with um, Minister Tosin. But I want us to just understand there's something that the Holy Spirit has put in my heart since and listening to all the teachers that have taught on this right from the beginning. Um, 
it's still the same thing but it's coming from different vessels and at different magnitudes and i believe that there's something the lord wants to also put in our hearts as members as tribe members not only for us alone but even for the people that he's sending us to as marketplace ministers this is marketplace ministers fellowship so when you come here have an open mind that what you're receiving is not only for you it is also for the work that you have been called to do and um there was something uh, mr wisdom said she said that in the restoration of the soul healing of the soul and um while i i was just studying on this there was a particular scripture that just continued to resonate in my heart which is very common what we know what we know that's proverbs 23 7 victoria if you can help me proverbs 23 7 which is a very scripture that i believe we all know and have heard or have even said at some point and it says that for as he thinks in his heart so is he eat and drink he says to you but his heart is not with you this scripture talks largely about I know it talks about somebody that has invited someone else to for a feast and in as much as the person is feasting it is not what is in the person that that is the way it seems or that is what we can understand it to me but the common saying there and the particular sentence i will say or scripture that i will take out of this is for as he thinks in his heart so is he so is he as he thinks in his heart so is he and i started to understand that the function or where we find ourselves it relates to our life and then um, even the the level of which maybe even in our business is everything that resonates around us is a function of how we think how we reason and then also even our health even down to everything that pertains to our health you will see that even if you have received so much and then um prayers and um will i say um yeah prayers if you still have in your heart that you are still afflicted or that thing is still there maybe because fear has opened the door or anxiety has opened the door you find out that it would always have a way of coming back there are a lot of things we have learned from the beginning of this um, teachings from the beginning but you find out that if your heart has not come to that place where you say maybe let me just use for instance now because we are talking of divine um, um, health restoration of divine health and you know that you have a condition that maybe has to do with overeating you may have prayed all the prayers and everything but if your mind has not been settled that you want to work on this thing you want to stop eating and you have not started taking measures you find out that no matter how many prayers you pray no matter how many prayers you pray you will still find yourself going back to that place going back to that place that you are still afflicted you find out that you would always still recycle the same problem. What I want us to understand is that divine health is a function of the health also of your mind. How healthy, what is the state of your mind? And I'll be using maybe the heart and the mind interchangeably because it's very important. How healthy, what is the state of your mind? And when we say restoration of divine Sorry. health, I know Mama Sister Kudo, sorry. Yes. Madam Binta, your video is on. If you can put it off, that would be great. Go ahead, Akudo. Okay, thank you. So when we say um, divine health, we have to understand that it's a function of the state of our mind and hearts too. It's a function, regardless of how many places we go and how many things we do. If the state of our hearts and our mind has not been worked on, that was why I particularly like 
the last um, prayer point that our sister, um, Minister Wisdom, raised. Because truly, you find out that some of these things that the enemy introduces to us, trauma and um, emotional instability and um, heartbreaks or bitterness, things that would leave a scar on our soul, on our emotions, they are things that further define the state of our mind or our hearts over time. And what the enemy is trying to do is to create an opening where he can come in, where he can come in freely, where he can come in freely. And you think that, oh, okay, yes, you have the right to be upset. Yes, you do, because someone offended you. But if you understand that there is a larger plan of the enemy in place, then you would understand that in as much as you have the right to be um, angry. I think there's a scripture that says, is it be angry, but do not sin. In as much as you have the right, you should not be the one that will cause that opening. Because a lot of health issues that people have had, whether it's even, um, whether it's even, um, generational and all that, you find out that in as much as it came from somebody, it was because the devil had done so much of a work on that person that it could even pass, maybe imputed the fear and everything that it could pass from generation to generation. There was some form of genetic mutation and then it passes and it's like, oh, my family, we have this and we have that. What I just want us to understand and really the summary of this teaching is that the state of your heart the state of your mind, the state of your life. If you have a scarred mindset, or if you have a mindset that is not in 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 tandem, is not um, on the same plane. If you're not thinking as the same way God wants you to think, a lot of things will be out of place for you. A lot of things will be out of place for you. That's the truth. The, the when you say restoration of the divine health you know normally the first thing you would think of is the body and the soul and everything but even your relationship with people some of these things are have a lifespan so which you can even use um way and say okay is my business healthy is this healthy is this healthy so your mindset towards these things your mindset towards these things will determine how the business will go, how your relationship with people will go, even your business, even your family too. And then even your body. But usually it starts from you, your own body, your mindset or um, yourself, your emotions. Then it starts to stream out. The enemy will try to do so much work so that you don't have, you don't believe that Christ has already died for you. You don't believe that there is a way out. You don't even believe that it can be restored. And then you allow these things to continue in your body and you live with it. You find a way to manage. You manage. You find a way to manage. The truth is just that when we come to that point where we start to really seek God and ask him really what is the real thing what do you really what was your original intention what was your original intention then you start to have the mind of christ you start to understand what god they come in parts because maybe if it comes all at once you may not be able to understand you may not be able to take it in but gradually he leads you and that's how he restores us but you find out that people don't come to that point where they stay with God. They meditate. They say, oh God, I know you have something for me. I know that this is, um, this originally, since you said your son has died for me, and why am I still in this condition? What is really going on? Some of us don't even ask questions. It's not bad to seek for people to pray for us. It's not bad to go to where we will seek help. But for some people, it wasn't done to you by some. It was it, you were the one that allowed yourself, put yourself in that position where you opened up for the enemy to come in. And then 
do whatever it is that has left us in that condition. And the way this thing is, why it sometimes is like a struggle for us as believers is because we have accepted God as our Lord and personal Savior, accepted Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. We've gone, we say yes, that we are one with him. But his mindset for us, what he wants for us, what we want for us, we still want to live on another belief system. We don't want to come fully into what he has done for us. We understand that, oh yes, Christ has died for us and by his, 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 his blood. But you know that there still has to be the diligence of you seeking out your place in God. When you accept God and yes, you've accepted that healing. That's why I like the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Because I can tell you that she would have, she had already been meditating on that scripture for so long that it was already a part of her. That even when a prayer was not even said for her, she was able to take her healing. Let me use that word. She's the perfect example of a mindset change. Because all the while, the scripture says that she had had this infirmity for 12 years. And it's like she had spent all her money. So it was obvious that she had tried everything. Which is the condition that some of us find ourselves. And open your heart when I'm speaking. Because I know our mind goes to divine health like our bodies. But open your mind to, to even other things. To you trying to restore the health of your relationship with maybe a husband or a wife or a sister or a brother. Because a lot of us have actually tried a whole lot of things. But you see that this woman had done so many things from what the scripture said. And yet those were things she understood then could work for her. But at this point, when she had come to this knowledge of God, and I know she would have heard so much about Jesus. That was why she would have seen, probably seen one or two people that were healed which will further strengthen her conviction. And then she said, see, today, I don't even want him to pray for me. All I just want is for him to touch, for me to touch the hem of it. Let me just have contact. That was all. Contact. Contact with him. Maybe because some other person that she saw that was healed had some form of contact with Jesus. So she felt, don't worry, I just want to have this. This is the way. This person and okay, that is my own. So you can see that her mind was totally changed. Fine, she was the one that maybe thought about how she would get the healing, but she had already pictured it in her mind. Her mindset had changed that she was going to get her healing that day. Nothing was stopping her from getting her healing. Nothing. The mind had totally been renewed. It had been so renewed that she invented her own way. And it's the same thing as the same man too. That I think his four friends lifted him and uh, removed the roof. So that they could drop the friend where Jesus was, regardless of the crowd. So you see people with the kind of hearts that they had towards the things of God. They were diligent, they were consistent, they were persistent. They were persistent. They had seen something they knew. And then you could see the restoration that came on for them or even for their friends. Even for their friends. I wanted us to just really understand that there is a mindset for these things. There's a place where your mind has to do a whole lot of work too. Because the enemy will still be trying to plant his own seeds. The perfect example of, I can say for myself, of a restoration of divine health is Job actually in the Bible. Because when Job was who he was, the way God, let me just say, the way God was, children, good health, sacrificing, being a priest, you can imagine. And then he became afflicted. And then three friends came, four friends came in total. But three came. And it's the same way when things happen. 
the enemy would want to plant seeds. So these three friends were the ones that the enemy was using to plant those negative seeds in the heart of Job, saying all sorts of things to him. I can't read the whole scripture, but I know we know at least one or two things about the story of Job. And the enemy was using these ones to plant seeds in the heart of Job. But you will see that Job's mindset did not. Yeah, he was upset, he was worried because if a normal person would be confused. A normal person would be upset that, and what did I do wrong? I think he was still trying to say, Lord, what did I do wrong actually? Because I did everything you told me to do. So I think that was even more of his confusion. He not only maybe sacrificed for himself, even for the children, he was still sacrificing. So what happened? But even with everything that he was told, he still had a mind towards God. He still, his mindset towards God did not change. So when the healing came, when the restoration came, that was what God stood on. Because even as the enemy, it was warfare, actually. What Job went through that period was warfare in the, I'll call it warfare in the mind, which is what a whole lot of us go through. But we don't know that it's warfare. When we are thinking thoughts about a particular situation, it just comes in, eh, but um, maybe let me say someone gets you so upset. And you know, as a believer, that you should forgive. You don't want to be bitter. You don't want to have all that bitterness in your heart. So you know you should forgive and you're still trying to, okay, let me then, the enemy starts planting here, yeah, but she shouldn't have done this to you if she uh, maybe loved you so much as she claims or, yeah, if she respects you, she shouldn't have done this, she shouldn't have done that. And you're like, it's true. It's true. She has known me maybe for so long. You know, when it's warfare, those, those things are actually warfare in the mind. You know, sometimes you think warfare is when you see the um, arrow and you see the gun and you see, no. Those arguments that go on in the mind. The enemy is trying to do something to alter your thinking so that he can come in freely. So that he can come in freely, have access to you, and then plant something. If you listen to um, um, Derek Prince very well, he would always say something that over time and in his ministry, he found out that a lot of people that had arthritis was linked to bitterness, especially people that were bent over. They were bent over. That that bitterness opens up for demons to come in and then like inhabit them and all that. You listen to him very well. So the enemy is trying to do all sorts of things to release like a poison in you, I'll call it a poison. The same way they shoot those arrows of um, infirmity and everything is the same way. Because so those ones come in maybe softly, so you think it's nothing, but that is the playing ground, that is the main field, your mind. The state of your heart, the state of your mind is what actually determines your health. The relationship even with people, the health, the way you interact with people, a lot of things, the state of your mind. is the state of your mind that would put you in a place where if somebody does something, even if the person didn't know it, and yes, let me say it may be bad or something. You see that some people are easily, they forgive easily, whereas some people don't. It's just the state of them. And maybe because some of them, they've been hurt so many times that when they see that thing again, they get hurt. But some people, maybe they forgive easily because of the way their heart is. Because of the hell, the, the state of them. So they just, they even give excuses for that person and say, oh, maybe she didn't know or something. Or maybe they can call and say, okay, what really went on? I just want us to understand that you can't really go far in divine restoration of your health, like physical health now, if your mindset has not been worked on. If the light of God has not been is a shine in your heart or your mind, if, if you have not been restored to 
in your mind, if the emotions are still dominant, the anger, the bitterness, the, 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 the hurt. So for some people, restoration of divine health will be on that line for them before even anything physical, that's the truth. Because they may have to, they may have gone to so many places, but you just find out that nothing is going on. I remember when I walked years back, I walked with a particular lady, and I just noticed that for everything we did, it was like um, it was she was always like maybe trying to like compete and everything. I was like, what's going on? What's um, going on? I didn't really know her. She just started walking. Maybe like a but I just noticed that everything was like a competition and everything. And then one day I was talking to one of the staff from um, something else happened at work. And he just, you know, brought up the story again. And I said, the way you're talking about this lady, it's obvious she grew up in a polygamous home. He said, How did I know? I said, There's some things you will see. He now said this. I said, Yeah, because sometimes you will just see that they're always trying to fight for who is the best. It's a mindset. So she came out with that mindset and came to the workplace with it. I'm not her family member. I don't even know anything that is going on, but you're already fighting with me, trying to like outshine or something. So you can see, I know we've heard a lot of things about mindset and all that, but I don't think we can talk about restoration of divine health. And I know that um, it has been spoken about too. But it's an emphasis because even the things that we hear now, the things that go on now, right now, the enemy is trying everything to instill a form of mindset into people, which can grant him access into their lives. And then he can use them to do what he wants to do. And as I was talking about Job, you will see that when the three friends came and were telling us it was only the youngest one that came and spoke differently contradicted those other ones even some things that job said he proclaimed god's justice and so many other things but job still had a frame of mind with the things of god he didn't lose it that's one thing I still liked about him. He didn't lose it. He had an understanding. And after then, the scripture talks about how God now came and started talking to him. But you will see that even with everything that Job went through, he was the one that was made to pray for those friends so that they would be restored. Although even he, even he, that's Job 42 verse 7, he said, the scripture said, and so it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord spoke to Eliphaz the time, my, my wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. You have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. That means even in Job's affliction, he was still saying the right things. He still had a mindset about who God was. Some things were not altered. Some things were not changed about him. He still stood his ground. He may have suffered and suffered a whole lot of loss. But the mind was still intact. The mind, the heart towards God, who God was to him, who God even was, was still intact. And that is what the enemy comes to fight in us. It was the same thing that he did to Adam and Eve in the beginning, where he altered their mindset. And then we know where we are right now. It was the same thing. And I started to even think about it. And, and I was like, the mind is so strong that you find out that the scripture says that, or then you even hear things like, if you kill like a man or a man of God or something, those are things, sometimes those things doesn't even kill the gospel in an area, maybe in a territory where people suffer persecution and all that. You find out that sometimes it spreads the more. I remember when they said there was a place in a time in China where they banned like churches and all that. But they said that was when home sales even started growing because people were now made to go back home and they started 
worship him. And then it was stronger. The, the, the thought was persecution. But they made that gospel, the spread of the gospel, stronger. But then you will see that even in death and burning and trying to, it doesn't stop the gospel of God. But when you alter a man's mindset, when you alter, when you do an alteration, the children of Israel are a perfect example. I like to use that example because it was so bad that God had to clear that generation because of it. those ones that had that mindset. God said, you see these ones, I'm not even content with them. Just go. Let me make like a new set of people. So it goes to show how strong it goes to show the impact that your mind has. So don't trivialize those thoughts that come in when the enemy wants you to doubt or get angry or something. Victoria, if you can help me with Romans 8, 5 to 6. Romans 8, 5 to 6. The scripture says that for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So that those who set their minds. So what are these things that introduce some death to us? Even our mindset, even death, like trying to pull us out of what God originally wanted for us. Pull us out of that. Will I use the healthy mindset, the life-giving um, position that God has already put us in. I think it's Galatians that talks about um, the, the works of the flesh and adultery, fornication, lasciviousness. Um, you have jealousy, hatred, witchcraft. And he mentions so many things, bitterness and all that. So that the works of flesh. So when you set your mind on these things, when the enemy keeps introducing these things to you, it introduces death to your mind death to the things of God actually and then this now transfers to your body because that death pulls you away from the spirit pulls you away from the things of the spirit that death even at that point even the potency of the word of God that you hear cannot even find expression in you because your mind has been injected with something that doesn't give the word of God an opportunity to even survive. It strangles it. Let me use that word. In you. So this death, this thing is determined by what you let in and what you allow. That's the truth. What you allow to thrive in you. What you allow to thrive in you. What you allow to remain in your heart what you want to keep what you decide to throw away that's the truth we need to come to that point where we own this body we know you know that you have to throw out these things you have to be the one to do that work because it's what you allow to be dominant in you truly that will be dominant. I know that there's a struggle. I know that there's places where you push and it's like, yeah, that's the warfare. But whichever is dominant, whichever is stronger is what will actually rule you. So if you allow the anger or the bitterness or the hatred or the hurt or the pain to rule you, to be, to be dominant, then it will rule you and then determine and then the enemy finds his way. And he can do all sorts through our mind. You find out that it's not only that you're now hurt, you go around to doing so many other things to other people. You may not know and you say, yeah, you have the right, maybe you were hurt, you were, did somebody did this to you and mm -mm. The state of your heart largely determines 
the state of your mindset largely determines truly the outcome, the physical. So when you see maybe somebody that is always um, bitter or even somebody that is in a particular um, state at a point, let me go say mood swings too. It's because the person has allowed these things to dominate the body. It's the state of the mind actually. Is the state of the mind. So you have to take charge. And how do you do this? With the word of God, it's like a light that comes to dispel darkness. Initially, when you start getting introduced to the word of God, it may not be easy. That's the truth. But that's the warfare. That's the warfare in it, in the mind. The truth is, we don't have like an enemy. The, the, the Satan is not like a one-time, let's say, um, contender. He, he contends for life. That's the truth. If you pull him away and give him, he will come back. It's not like he's powerful, but it's just because maybe um, he's a spirit, so maybe he has he thinks he has the advantage of time. But then it makes you understand that you need a mindset that makes you a weapon against any uprising of the enemy. That is the kind of, you should be forged. If you ask true men of God, they will tell you that a lot of things start and end in the mind. They will tell you that. If you ask sincere people, they will tell you that a lot of things, battles started in the mind. It never saw the light of day. So the health of your mind, the state of your mind is very, very pivotal to your divine restoration. So it could be that you're already in a state of maybe um, sickness or something. Yes, I understand that. But what has God got to say about that? He has told you that this, his son has died for you and released you from every bondage. So how do you enact it how do you come to that point where you enforce it is it in the place of prayer for some people it may not even be prayer it may be a change of what you are doing that brought about that ailment that's the truth it may be the eating habits it may be that you may even need to take more rest it may even be fasting that is the truth you know people have not come to understand the spiritual implication of fasting. There's the, oh, I need to pray and gather power, but even to our health, the detoxification process, both in the spirit and in the physical, is immensely great in fasting. I can tell you for sure that there's a state you reach in fasting that the cell, the cells of the body start to, let's say, let me use this word for name, I don't know, um, how many of us will know it? It's called it autophagy or something. This is fasting now. It's a natural process in which the cell of its on its own breaks down and recycles or damages, um, it recycles or, or damaged old unnecessary parts of the cell. It removes junk from the cell. So you see that a lot of sickness, people think that. Oh, okay, there's yeah, there's that, there's that great spiritual, but even the physical. I personally don't believe in detoxing pills. Me, like this, that I'm the one that sells drugs. I know everything. I don't see me. I don't. My greatest detoxifiers, water, exercise. Water, exercise, and fasting for me. And I can tell you that 110 percent water exercise most especially fasting most especially so let's even say okay yeah there's the fasting from food and all that <laughs> but there's also the fasting of from being bitter and being hurt and being emotional and and all that we need to understand 
where God has put us as believers. We need to understand that we are actually above all these things. That's the truth. It's, it's not easy, truly. It's not easy. But it's a work that you need to do yourself. You need to tell yourself. I think, and I always say this, that <laughs> why is it that Jesus did not stay in heaven and just snap his finger and everything? God really needed to show us that these things can be done. So that when we see it in the Bible, we will not say, oh God, because you're supernatural, he sent his son to go through it too with us. So you see that Jesus prayed, Jesus fasted, Jesus did these things. You too have to do it. You too have to do it. But most of all, you need to understand the mind of Christ for you. The mindset, the thoughts that God, he said he knows the thoughts that he has towards us good and not evil. Some of us are running on the promises that God gave other people. We have not gone to seek God for ourselves. Some of us, that is where our healing would actually start from. When we understand the mind of Christ for us, when we understand what God, that is where the healing, that is where divine helps comes. That is where the restoration, that is where life will start to make meaning to you. We've not taken that time. Let me go say in prayer or retreats. I was talking to someone here. I said that sometimes people just pray, 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 pray. They don't even wait for God to speak back to them after praying. And yeah, they'll pray maybe three hours, four hours. They don't even open up their ears to hear God. They just leave. So how do you want to get the instruction? How do you want to get what God is telling you? How do you want to get the direction? We need to learn a lot of things, unlearn a lot of things, and learn if we want our souls, our spirits to be healed, if we want to be restored to the original position that God wants us to be. It's very important. We need to come to that point where even if we are seeking healing, it is what God wants for us, not what seems like is good. Because that's what sometimes people do. Oh, this worked for everybody. Let me know. What does God want for you? What does God himself want for you? Let's learn to seek God. These things are soothing to our soul when we hear God for ourselves, when we can interpret what God is saying, the seasons and the time. You see that if you're a bit confused about something, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But when you hear God, when you get clarity, you see how you, it's like you've entered into a place of rest. There's like a refreshing to your soul. Learn to meditate on the word of God. Learn to stay with the word of God. Learn to wait on God, to hear from him. These things are soothing to the soul. These things are soothing as, 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 as men and women. Because God is not man that, I will, as I'm speaking to you, he's speaking back. He's a spirit. So he, And again, he's not only just a spirit, he's a king spirit. So he will choose to speak however he, he wants to speak to you. That's the truth. So however he draws you, if he says go for a retreat, if he says meditate, if he says just learn. These are things that restore us to the original position. These are things that clean off, help us to clean those scars. Help us to clean the, the, the I know there was a man of God and let me give this example so that he, he gave us this example. And you will see how the enemy was trying to come into his family to destroy the family. Let me use this word, to destroy, let me say, the health of the family, the, this process, everything around the family. He said his wife works, but he doesn't work. I've said this story to so many other people, but I guess there are some people on this call. He said his wife works, he doesn't work. So every time, because he's a pastor, after in the night, he will call her, let them pray. But you know, the woman will do, go to children, do everything. By the time he calls her to pray, before they start, and how many minutes she has slept off. 
that he will be so upset, very upset that ah, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Why would she do understand? She doesn't understand the call of my life. She does not understand the grace of my life. So anything was causing problem because he expected that she would know. And he said, it is a man of God that he'll be so angry after they finish praying, he will leave her there and go. He will not even call her to go to the room. So he said one day the lady went to work and then he woke up, you know, someone that is full-time pastor, he knelt down to pray at his own convenience. And then he said the Holy Spirit told him that, you know, you're a wicked man. He said, how? He said, no. That reminded, told him again. He said, how? He said, you know, started explaining this thing to him, that this woman takes care of the children. She will go to work, come back, still take care of the children, do everything. The time that she has to sleep, you will bring her to pray. You, you are not doing anything. You can see that his mindset was, I'm a pastor, she has to understand. The mind did not break it down like this for him. And then when Holy Spirit convicted him, he said he felt so bad. And then he allowed him. But he said during lockdown, where people didn't go to work again, he said, if you see the way the woman was praying, because she wasn't going to work, he said, the way her fire got lit in that period, things like this, that family could have had issues. And I know there are so many families too that have had this thing because the man said, Don't you, can't you descend the grace upon my life and everything? You don't consider the weight that you don't even help ourself. He said, I think even after that was when he said he really started helping with domestic activities. But you can see how the enemy came in with annoyance, with bitterness and all that. And this is just one story among so many things. If the Holy Spirit can do a work on a lot of our minds, we will see that we are not actually thinking rightly about some things. And because we are not thinking rightly, we are introducing or being the ones that are introducing um, death or some form of issue, injury to that relationship or even our bodies or even the situation that we've been put. I just wanted us to understand that we have a place to ask God to set our hearts right with him. That in our search and our walk with God, in our search and our walk with God, we should understand that there's a mindset that we need to, and that is what would actually fuel the divine help, not only for it to be one off, but so that this thing can flow through us and then flow through to other people too. Because not only are you going to be restored, God will use you in different places to restore people. God will use you. So, if maybe there has been a particular ailment or something that you've been going through, ask yourself if really your mind, what is your mindset towards that thing? Do you really believe that you can be healed? Or could it be that the Holy Spirit has even been giving you the a, a seemingly simple instruction? Like, um, is it um, Elisha and the uh, leper, I think it was Nehemiah, that was told to go and bait. Some of us, God has given us a very simple instruction that will lead to our healing. Very simple, but we're expecting that fire will come down and mop up everything. But God is saying, this is just the will. Any other thing I've left you, but your mindset has been so clogged with so many things, and you can't just see God for who He is. You are expecting, you are pushing, you are turning His hand. You want Him to do it the way God is saying. I've answered you. Any other thing is up to you. It's up to you. I want us to just really consider these things and just think of the state of our hearts towards the things of God. Let it not just be an outward thing. Let it be inward too. I think is some um, Psalm 51. Let me just um, look for it. I said, you desire your truth in my inward parts. He said he was shaping 
in iniquity, in sin did my mother conceive, conceive me. Say, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. God doesn't want it to be external. He wants even your mind. This is what the psalmist said. So I'll just be handing over to um, Minister Tosin now. And I hope that we've been able to just get something from the word today as I hand over. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. I ask, oh God, that indeed in the inward parts of each and every one of us, oh God, that you embed your truth in us and your wisdom too, so that we will be divinely restored. Our health will be restored, both in the heart, both in the mind, emotion, soul, everything. Everything that your light, your truth will shine in us and dispel every darkness that indeed we will be that light of the world. We will be that light. Our restoration will not be temporary. It will not just be an outward expression, but even inwardly, we would have an understanding that you can use us to do your will. Father, we just say thank you once again. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Minister Tosin, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Minister Kudu. Thank you. God bless you. Can we appreciate Minister Kudu in the comments? Can we? You know, one thing is that um, from the time when I joined the prayers, I realized that, you know, God was doing a thing because the prayers that Minister Wumi raised, how that literally, you know, how Minister Kudu started in terms of this is literally where, where what I wanted to cover and how three of us didn't talk to each other, but um, it, it's, it's provided a perfect platform to sort of continue from where she has stopped because it's really the same message. And it's a privilege to be drinking from the same river because Jesus is our source. Can we appreciate her in the comments, please? Can we? God bless you so much, Minister Omi. God bless you as well. While she was talking, it just occurred to me that you know that woman with the issue of blood pioneered a new way to a new a new way of faith, if I can put it that way. Because today, right, we pray and say, God, like the woman with the issue of blood, let me touch the hem of. We've come to touch the hem of. Before she did it, no one had done it. After she did it, a lot of other people started to do it. I know you know Jesus. It's the reason why we're all here. But there are layers to this same Jesus that by reason of our spending time with him, he opens us up to those, those kind of dimensions. Such as the world has never seen before. Because our God cannot be put in a box to say this is all there is to him. Our topic today is restoration of divine health. Holy Spirit, I ask that you grant me your turns. I ask, O oh God, that you put words in my mouth. I ask that you help me, O oh God, to say this in the way that you showed me. That we all, including myself, may be partakers of your knowledge, O oh God, of your wisdom. That your name alone, O oh God, that at the end of this, O oh God, at the end of today, that all who have come here will see Jesus lifted up and see the amazing things that you're capable of doing. Thank you. In Jesus' name I've prayed, amen. We have precedence on this topic. It's, it's amazing how much a lot of people have poured. And so I will be a little bit short today because I want us to pray at the end, or well, whichever way the Holy Spirit wants us to go. Or restoration usually focuses on the fact that there was a previous setting you remember this i, I remember minister damola saying this that restoration means there was a previous setting that used to be in place and is no longer there so restoring means you're taking things back to where they used to be what minister kudo said was literally it was almost like she picked from my and and as i i really really urge us to please just Make sure that there are no distractions from your end. Just pay attention. It may be something you've heard before, but I have no doubt that God wants to bless someone here. It may be a specific word. I have seen God do that several times for me. How something jumps out from a statement and how he confirms it somewhere else. It happened again today, twice actually. You know, So I, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that there's something God wants to do. I was already started to do, right? So 
our responsibility is to be in a place where we can pick it when when that word comes out that is specifically for you restoration can seem fairly simple or obvious but it is in that simplicity that lies the reality that we sort of need to understand did you know there was a time when divine health did not need to be restored it was literally the default setting when you say health i know a lot of people think of health and it's just the physical which is why today's particular angle of this topic really resonates with me synonyms for health will include sound whole wholesome safe sound more than often when you say healthy is the absence of illness or injury but illness um, when we think of sickness it, it's only the physical parts of it that comes to our mind but i want to tell you something else today i'm putting emphasis on the mental well-being as well because the most obvious indicators are physical but they are not the complete indicators while one may even pass the physical test it's only a measure of health it's not the full measure what this means is that there are well-dressed people who look physically fit but frankly their mental places is, is is in a different place completely you may have even met some people right because when some people say some things and you look and what comes to your mind will be to ask are you okay that are you okay means are you seeing the world from the same place i am seeing it do you understand that when a madman is out there naked do you understand that you look at the madman as the person that there's something wrong with do you understand the madman also sees people who are dressed and thinks there's something wrong with these people you know so mental health more than often influences the physical that your mind is a battleground there's a reason why it's a battleground and so you see seemingly okay people suddenly put themselves in harm's way but in terms of what was supposed to be there in the default settings if we go back to the beginning when you explore genesis chapters one two and three we find out that god created an environment right and then specifically in 126 he then created man in his image and I'm, I'm trying to shorten all of that that victoria i'll tell you when to you know open i, I think go to genesis 2 from 16 but I, i'm coming there just so that you can put that on the screen but as a background so god first created an environment then he created the man he established that man's dominion he blessed him then he spoke the mandate he spoke his mandate in genesis 2 we see that the man god created is put in a body right man the created is where the elohim came then there was man the formed where he formed from the ground right and he breathed life into him and then he that man became a living soul by the investment of life that god gave to him and this is where the holy spirit started to make some things clear to me a, a bit and i didn't I, I hope as i start to explain it that it makes a lot of sense to you the way it did for me how many of us on this call have a dual sim phone can you raise up your hands real quick your phone uses two sims is there anybody here like that you, you have a phone that uses two sims can you please by a show of hands just to double check either you so if, if at, at least we know the concept of dual sim phones right so like a dual sim phone let me explain the context to you sim one was activated which was operating a kind of life that came from that god's investment for the man so from the very beginning there were like two sim cards but sim one was the one god wanted to operate so why did he create sim two or why was there a sim two there by default sim two was there but it was deactivated think of it that way god wanted to make sure that every day this man chose him by operating with him one that's why he placed that tree in the middle of the garden that man literally had to walk past abundance pass through that center where he told him don't do this and continue walking through abundance he wanted that man to exercise his choice because it was one of the key markers of the man so it was like two sims but he told him operate with him one and here's the thing victoria i'm still waiting for you to put up scripture for me i'm talking genesis 2 from 16 to 17 because this is where God was explaining to the man that Sim 1 is your default. 
and the settings for sim one includes everything else except one thing now that one thing that was the exception is linked to sim two in fact in verse 17 specifically of that genesis 2 this was where thank you this was where god was calling out what will activate him to he said let's start from 16 lord commanded man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt die so it looked like god was saying that the day you do that one thing i tell you not to do you will activate another sim that will operate differently from how i've made things to be so sim one we can equate it to life sim two we can equate it to death so we can say that sim one was a state of wholeness being safe sound being wholesome being whole this man operating in sim one was in sync with god he heard as god heard he saw as god saw how do i know this look at verse 19 Oh, Victoria, I just lost scripture again. I, I don't think it's just me. Can you please keep it on the screen? I don't know, maybe you're having some challenges, but in that verse 19, God was, what the Bible says there is that God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he would call them. Now, do you understand how probability works? Do you understand how on random it is that every animal god brought to man man named and it was the name god had in mind i don't think you understand because even birds alone have over ten thousand species each of the animals god brought for that man man called it the same name god had in mind so this is where we see that synchronization so he was literally operating within the mind of god he was whole that was sim one at work now when you go a bit further and uh, victoria i really 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 need my scripture because i want to move very fast and this is you know in any case let me see if i can pull it up somewhere else on my side so i can read it out to the guys if it, i just wanted it to be in front of them okay so i'm i'm right now on genesis um, okay, so I was talking about 19, and I'm reading it out for you, please. Now, the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he will name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. You know, God is not shy of saying, oh, stop. Oh, you made a mistake here. Oh, this. God, how do we know this? Because at some point when God was evaluating all his creation, he said it's not good for man to be alone. He saw something that needed a fixing. And so he did something about it. That's the nature of God. And so every animal that he brought for that man and he named him, that was the name thereof. That meant this was the name God also had in mind for it. In verse 25 of this same chapter 2, the Bible says Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. It means that, and, and I'm building up, please, so you will understand why I'm saying within Sim 1, there was a principle of physically they were okay, but there was also another principle of spiritually they were also healthy. So physically they were okay because there was no recorded type of illness. None of that happened as long as they were operating in Sim 1. Also in that Sim 1, we saw how much of a synchronization he had with god because he was doing things the way god will do and he was also seeing things the way god saw them so it was both physical it was both spiritual as well when we then come to genesis 3 by this point the devil had gotten involved here so to quicken this um, point i'm trying to make we know this story right the devil had already painted a mental picture for eve and because of that mental picture that the devil painted for Eve, she ate that one thing that deactivated Sim 1 and activated Sim 2. Now, as soon as she, because when I said painted a mental picture, my reference point is, the Bible was saying that when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye so after all the things he had said there was something she saw by reason of what he had said and then because of that she fell he fell bottom line is that sim 2 was activated and sim 2 came with its own settings 
which we see immediately in Genesis 3, verse 7. Now, in Genesis 3, 7, I'll read it out to you so you can please follow me. Someone's camera is on, on Fatile Sibanda. If you could please turn off your camera. Thank you very much. Genesis 3, 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig trees together and made coverings for themselves. Sim 2 was activated, but you see, Sim 2 is not the same thing as Sim 1. Sim 1 is operating in Zoe life. Sim 2 is operating as the fallen man. They were naked and unashamed in Genesis 2 under Sim 1, but we quickly see a difference in Sim 2 settings because the Bible says that what? They saw, the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. So nothing changed about their status. It was how they now started to see things. Because for a while, their nakedness was the same in both sims. The difference was how that nakedness now looked. So sim 2 brought with it a whole new setting that was completely out of sync with the creator and placed emphasis on different things. So we can also say, we can say based on what, what I've been trying to build up now, that the sync program on sim 1 was changed and a new sync program was activated. After all, those of you who use dual sim phones, you often use different service providers in that phone. Those of you who have two phones, where it's not two SIM cards or two, you know, where you have two phones, you usually what? Have one different service operator and another different. Why? Because you're creating redundancy. If this one is down, I can at least get data on the other one. But you see, in this context, SIM 1 was the complete package of life. The Zoe life was guaranteed to give that man everlasting life. We will not be here he would not even have had to leave the garden but sim 2 on the other hand ensured a separation and a disconnection with god which was anti-life so even though that man did not fall down dead he was now available to download everything that will make sure there was nothing zoe about his life and that's why the next time he heard the voice or the sound of god he went to hide the settings had changed when we talk about restoration of divine life, there's a way God planned it all the way it was how it was supposed to be in the beginning. And there's a way the devil envisaged it as well. And so when we say restoration, it means going back to what God had in mind. Sim 2 is that of the fallen man. And that fallen man is not just a measure of the fact that he has malaria. It is that there's a disconnect from him and God. So the next time Adam heard the voice or the sound of God, he went to hide. The same sound that was his reality had become something to fear. And the immediate manifestation of Sim 2 was fear. Please hold on to this. Fear is mental. I started this by telling us that when we think about health, we always think physical. But there's a mental part of it. And usually when the devil wants to afflict someone, he starts from the mind. He begins to tell someone, you know, has it happened to anybody on this call that maybe you start to shiver and randomly without consulting anything, you just hear a voice in your mind that says, hmm, maybe this thing is cancer. Oh, maybe this thing is appendicitis. You know, just random. And he begins to program. He begins to marinate an idea. He begins to, and before you know it, there's a manifestation physically of what started in the mental space. So the same man who used to hear the voice of God and have conversations with God, because he was operating under Sim 2, it was fear. And he said to God that I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. The next manifestation was blame because when God told him, who told you that you were naked? Because you were naked before it wasn't an issue. You're naked now, it's an issue. Something has changed. Who told you? And the next thing he did as a manifestation after that fear was blame. He pointed his finger at his helpmate and said, is this woman you gave him? Sin was the first sickness and with it came many more. A man of God defines sickness as a measure of death. The reason why I've given us this analogy is that we understand what we're trusting God to restore. Divine health is not just being free from malaria or having to not go to any hospital throughout the year. Divine health also means that your spiritual senses are working. Because of what value is a man who is physically fit? There's nothing wrong with him. He has no sickness, but he's spiritually blind. It means you will still make decisions that are contrary to the plan God wants. And in principle, that man is walking in a form of sickness. 
because man activated sim 2 sim 1 became inactive and dormant and we know the story because Jesus had to come to show the process or the route to reactivating SIM 1. But if you remember how I started this story, a phone that has two SIMs in it has two SIMs in it. That is the reality. As long as we are on earth, we will always have the context of SIMs 1 and SIM 2. But the point is which of these SIMs regulate your life? From which of these SIMs are you operating? And I want us to understand it's not very simple. It's not a, it's not a, oh, I choose Sim 1. I'm telling you that even the greatest of men, that even the greatest of prophets have had moments where a Sim 2 crept in. And if you remember how Sim 2 was activated, this is why when the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, there are doors to this mind. I love the, the emphasis that Minister Kudo put on some of these things about you need to guard that your mental space. Is it the things you read? Is it the things you hear? Is it the things you see? There are things the devil provisions on a daily basis because his target is that space. Because once he gets into that space, it can be easy for him to, tr to trigger him to. And I'll give you an example. Can we please go to 1 Kings 19 from 1 to 8? A lot of us know this story very well. It's the story of Elijah. I'll give us a quick background to 1 Kings 19, 1 to 8. Prior to this chapter, this great prophet of God had used Sim 1 to operate in a dimension of power few people have manifested. Not only was he operating in Zoe life, and how do I know he was operating in Zoe life? Do you think some of us, and, and, and I know a couple of us will try and rationalize the acts of God because that's how the devil tries to put some things in our minds. When God told him to go by a brook, and to go and survive ravens bringing him food and drinking by a brook do you think it's easy to drink water by a brook that water may look clean but i'm telling you, you go and drink any random water from a brook and you can take flesh eating bacteria he was operating even though he went and ravens were bringing i don't know if ravens are the cleanest birds it's open to research but today a, an average person will find all sorts of ways in which that scenario is not palatable it's a route to disease but he was operating in a kind of zone under sim one that kept him immune not only him but he refused to even allow death operate near him he there was an incident with the widow of Zarephath's son. Because of the same one that was at work in him, it was not possible for him to be in the same place where death will come and pick one. He resurrected that boy. He was. What I'm trying to tell you is that in chapter 18, we saw how much of Sim 1 he was operating. He even knew what to do when he was under a prophetic word from God. God was the one that said, go and show yourself to Ahab that there will be rain. He went to announce, but the question is, if God told him there will be rain, why did he have to pray so hard? I'm trying to explain to you that he was a picture of divine health. His physical, his spiritual was alert. He knew that even when God has spoken a prophetic word, you may still need to take the shape of a birthing posture to bring that thing to life. He was alive, he was healthy. His senses were working both physically and spiritually. To crown it all, he left the most spectacular one to the end. Picture this. Ahab, my wife always says Ahab was a very spoiled king, by the way. And the more I read about that, I, I, I tend to agree with her. But imagine the finest horses in the kingdom. More than one of them who will run in sync. Well-bred horses, well-fed horses, doing nothing but run with open road in front of them. You know the thing about racing horses? They put something around their eyes to make sure their eyes, you know, I, I forgot, like an eye patch. Thank you, Spirit. Like an eye patch on their eyes. The purpose of the eye patch is to make sure their gaze is forward. You know, if you're like me, you can see like a 180 view, right? I can be looking forward, but I can see someone who is trying to, maybe like my kids do, they are trying to spook me by creeping in silently to then say, you know, like I scared you kind of thing. The point I'm trying to make is they put an eye patch around the horse's two eyes to make sure the horse can only see forward. Imagine the most well-bred, well-fed horses, four of them or whatever the count was in that chariot, racing towards Jezreel. It was a straight road all the way. The horses had nothing but ground in front of them. And if you understand how horses are, that is the horse's delight. Open ground in front of it with nothing but acres of space to run in. Imagine being the king and flying towards Jezreel. 
only to see a man with his jalabia tucked into his belt. Now, I, I don't know if you get this. If we modernize this, his chariot will be the most, maybe the fastest car available today. Imagine that car is maybe a Lamborghini or whatever make you can think of. Imagine that he's racing just towards the city. And imagine that from his peripheral vision is the horses that cannot see peripheral, right? Because of the eye patches. But he can see. So imagine from his peripheral vision, he sees someone just coming from his back. And then he looks to his side and he sees a guy with his tunic tucked in. And this guy is running. And not only is he running, you know, I'm sure the king, if he were me and I see someone running, I would simply smack the guy who is operating the chariot beside me and say, faster. So the guy probably brought out his whip and he beat those horses so they could run faster, which they did. But this man ran, came level with the horses, outran and went all the way to Jezreel. So this man was in, I'm trying to explain to you how much of Sim 1 he was operating in. Now, we then get to chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. So we start with Ahab's witness of the events that happened in the previous chapter. But it was not a witness from a converted standpoint. His witness was not the same as the witness of, for instance, when you go to Daniel and you hear Nebuchadnezzar's witness. Nebuchadnezzar's witness, when he saw what happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was to make a decree that the God of these people must be feared and revered. Darius's decree, when he saw what happened with Daniel, was the same thing. That was a decree of someone who had seen something. And that thing was enough to change the man. No, no, no. Ahab did not tell Jezebel what God had done. He told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, which means he put the blame squarely at, at Elijah's feet. Now, he did all of that in order to make sure that the queen was enraged. And this is why I'm saying that he was really spoiled. He was not a king. He was more like the second, the number two person in that kingdom. The number one person was Jezebel because he came to wine. Now, his witness was not like those other people who were saying, we must not worship any other God, only the God of these people, because they saw the works. He saw fire come down from heaven. He saw a guy outrun him on barefoot with his jalabia, his tunic tucked in all the way. None of that was enough to change this man. He came and gave a witness, a different witness. Now, Jezebel in chapter 2, and, and I'm building this up, please, because I want you to understand that it's not, it's not a random selection for you. You must be operating in one of those two sims. And even when you're operating in sim 1, there must be a consistency because, listen, it's very easy to switch sims. The Bible says, Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So she gave him an appointment because she told him that if I do not make your life like those people that you had killed by this time tomorrow, let the gods do to me. She, she literally gave the guy an appointment and switched up the board of directors, the org structure for him. She said, if I make not thy life, the meaning of that is that Elijah, your life is in my hands. I will do with it as I please at the same time tomorrow. That's not where I'm even going. How do I know that Sim 2 was activated for this great man of God who a chapter before was operating in Sim 1? It is that, look at chapter, like verse 3. The Bible says, and when he saw that, what did he see? She sent a messenger to him. Are you saying the messenger sat down in front of Elijah and drew the message for him on a canvas? Did she tell Elijah, Elijah, wait, I'm incapable of transmitting this message to you the way I heard it. I need to paint a picture for you. The Bible says, and when he saw that, words were said to him, but there was a different picture this man saw. And that picture made him run. That picture made him leave his servant in Bathsheba. That picture he saw made him go all the way somewhere under a tree and pray for death. A lot of people mock this man, but you don't understand. 
before now nobody knew where elijah was because they were looking for him the bible says the queen sent a messenger to him the same place where he was so she knew all along listen the devil knows where you are he knows that you're praying he knows that you're raising incense to god he knows your desire is to walk in same one but the devil wants to make sure that because if he takes away that ability for you to function under sim one and brings you into sim two then he has the space to attack your mental space and from there he can begin to manifest all sorts of physical things so sim two triggered mental health issues for elijah because how else do we describe this after all those things that happened in 18 a man, he saw something, he ran, he abandoned the servant somewhere, he went a day's journey into the wilderness. How Do you understand what will happen for a man to do all of this? He sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. If you look at this objectively, we could say he was depressed, he was suicidal. So this was mental health issues. What am I trying to say here? Elijah became sick sim 2 that was activated made him sick but the good thing is that we see his restoration as well in this chapter from verse 5 as he lay and slept under a juniper tree there's a lot of people under that tree there's a lot of people under that tree and God's desire is to restore you God knows the journey is too much for you. He knows the journey is too much for me. You're a Christian, but does that pre- does that exclude you from all the stress that you go through? We know the different scenarios that play out. If it's not work, maybe it's family. If it's not family, maybe it's personal stuff. People tell you things that by this age, you should have done this or you should have. There's so many things that are being flung to you left, right and center. This journey is great for you. As you lay under that juniper tree, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. The original command here is Arise from the word Kum. And then he looked and there by his head. The Bible doesn't waste words. You see, the more that I try and spend time with it, I realize that it, there's no waste of, if it's a full stop, a comma, if it's it leaks, there is no waste that a cruise of water and cake by his head was significant because the meaning of that word here is not just head physical head it is a head place a place of dominion mental it can also be used for beginning because christ was always there he when he was told to arise was not when that provision was made the provision was there he was the one that looked to see it god has always been there to make sure that your sim one is what you're using from the very beginning that's why that story started with sim one elijah looked and saw bread and water what is the significance of this john is the one that tells us a lot about the nature of jesus You see, that book, the Bible, is such a prophetic book because you see people who saw events that were in the past, saw events in the future. A Moses is writing the book of Genesis, events that happened before he was born. A John is also writing about Jesus and the structure of how things were, even when he did not see or did not experience those things. So in John, Jesus declared, And this was John's narration as well, saying, Jesus was saying here that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In that same John 4, 14, Jesus said, whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Can I present to you that Elijah looked up and what he saw was not just bread and water what he saw was jesus this was a an introduction of what jesus or who jesus is was meant to us right there and then hidden in the old testament so elijah looked and he beheld jesus and he partook of jesus he took the communion he took the body and the blood he took of jesus and we see he had to do it twice that 
against him too was so ingrained it had opened up so many things in his mind that he had to feast on jesus to take him almost back to where the original setting sim one where he was operating from and we see this because later on in that story the bible says that he was able to on the strength of that partaking that he did he was able to go 40 days and 40 nights and when god was going to reveal himself to him all the things that would typically scare a man did not scare him it was when he heard the still small voice this was a man operating back under sim one are you telling me that you can stand somewhere in a cave you will hear an earthquake you will hear and you will just stand there and be looking is that a man that seems normal to you It was also John who said in 3rd John 1-2 that be loved. I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers. When Minister Wisdom said this, I, I just smiled. There is such a thing as an inward fund of spiritual life. The same one that Elijah partook of, which took him for 40 days and 40 nights from the wilderness to the mountain of God. Grace and health are two rich companions. It is possible, listen, for a healthy body to be spiritually dead. It is possible for a healthy person that looks healthy to you by your physical definition of healthy to be spiritually sick. It's also possible for someone to be spiritually healthy and to be physically sick. But you see, what God wants us to do is to operate from Sim 1, where there is across both of this, you're able to operate under divine health. Your spiritual senses are open. It is the comprehensive health that God planned for us from the get-go. And that's why when you hear the story of David, it turns out that that because for I, I wondered up until recently that why did the Bible describe use the word Rudy? when they were describing david first when we hear our first introduction to him is it rudy or ruddy i don't know the right pronunciation but it's the r-u-d-d-y it turned out that that ruddy boy because that word actually is an indication of health he was a young chap ruddy means his skin color was like almost glowing well-fed boy that kind of thing it turns out that that boy was not only physically healthy but spiritually healthy as well in that mental space, he knew how to operate because it was drawing from a different source. It turned out that that boy who someone would look at as he was racing towards a giant who was nine feet nine, as he was running towards, because imagine that kind of thing. Imagine a young chap is racing towards a, there are people here, including myself, that will ask our next person to say, is that boy okay? It will look like it's a mental health issue for him. But well, that boy who was not wearing an armor on his way to fight a giant who was nine feet nine inches tall, weighing between 108 to 154 kilograms, whose sword alone weighs about six kilograms, almost as heavy as a bowling ball. It turned out that that boy who was described as ruddy was not only ruddy physically, but also ruddy spiritually. And we saw this because his discernment came to play. As he approached Goliath, the guy looked at David. But you see, what we saw there looked very physical. We didn't understand that there were other spiritual senses at play. Goliath saw the young chap coming, and in his mind, he was thinking there's something else this boy is coming with. And so Goliath did not immediately reach for his sword. He reached for his gods instead, and he cursed the boy in the name of his gods. And David, who knew who was operating under sim one who was the picture of divine health was able to discern that this battle had left the physical and so he also said to the man he said you come at me with this and this but i come at you in the name of the lord of hosts whose battle whose army you have defiled what i'm trying to explain to you is that god's purpose for you in the principles of divine health is not just your physical body The way to restoration is to partake of Jesus and to do it again. It, all, it puzzled me for a while why Jesus, I think it was in Mark's account, he talked about the blind man who came to Jesus. And after Jesus spat on his eyes and he asked him, what do you see? He said, I see men as trees walking. He was seeing something. And then Jesus did it again. Is it because he could not have done it the first time? But that second one, and then the Holy Spirit reminded me of another man of God who God has used to personally also, you know, mentor me in some specific things. Why 
more than often when the man wants to pray for people who are blind he comes and says there is something else apart from that physical blindness that they have there's something else he says god wants to open your eyes because the way god sees health is not just the physical you may be seeing clearly physically but you're still sick spiritually because your spiritual eyes are closed The way to restoration of divine health is to partake of Jesus and to do it again. This journey is too great for you. It is too great for me. It is too great for any of us. I know you know Jesus. It's the reason why we're all here. I know you know him. That's not, that's not the argument. But do you know him as the person who wants to restore your health in more dimensions than you literally think health is supposed to mean? Do you know him as the person who wants you to partake him to the extent where the way you're manifesting him, he creates a path. He does it in a way that no other person has done it before. Are you able to pursue him, understanding that it is him who gives us water that will cause rivers of living water to flow out of our bellies, that then makes us be in a position where we're operating at a level of health as described in Sim 1 in the very beginning? More than often, when we trust God for divine health, you're thinking about that medical report. You're thinking about that physical issue. You're thinking about it's always more than often physical. Today, again, there's also the mental bits of it because the devil knows that once he gets the mind, then the physical becomes a manifestation, becomes a symptom. That physical manifestation is a symptom more than often is not the root cause. The root cause is in the mental. But I'm telling you here today that God's desire for that mental health, it is to make sure that as we partake of him, that we draw from him life that feeds our spirit and it feeds our souls, where our mental, our emotions, our intellect, our will, it is stemming from. It feeds all of that and it makes sure that we're operating by a dimension that is powered by the spirit of God. There is no other way to survive this world, let me tell you. And that's why that phrase or that sentence was put in First Kings, that this journey is too great for you. Jesus knows it's too great for us. He knows. I am the bread of life. If anyone partakes of me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is, this is the same message we have heard again. But when you open your mouth now to pray and say in Jesus' name, when you say that, Jesus, I need you, when you want to trust God for a restoration, do you understand what you're asking for? The purpose of this teaching today is to make sure we understand what exactly he has in mind for us as operating under the first sim so that when we trust him because you can then lock your faith onto that and because you've locked your faith onto that you can begin to manifest that in. so it's not just because your body is absent from physical illnesses but even mentally you're okay even as far as your senses that are supposed to drive and, and that were supposed to use to operate that those things are functioning the way it should i want us to come off mute and pray as i'm as i wrap up, wrap up now i want us to come off mute and pray and I want you to trust God for your restoration. Your prayer is just one. You're going to pray that, Father, I should change myself every time I was trusting you for health. Now that I understand what you have in store in terms of the way you orchestrated, you organized things, Lord, I am trusting you to restore me. Complete restoration, the full package, the whole package, the comprehensive package. Can we come off mute and begin to pray? Can we come off mute and begin to make our demands from God? In the name of Jesus. That in my mental space, oh God, it will be so anchored to your word. 
Mazin, oh Jelis, da 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 da, and even when my strength fails, Rekaskeli nezede de break, kazi ketele ne makara, zada bakon jandi kazi lele kezede de de de. In the name of Jesus, that not only do we embody that health, how we become channels with which others connect with this packet. In the name of Jesus, He doesn't want us to hoard it. He doesn't want us to throw one and throw it away. He wants us to be channels through which even others access this divine package. This is how man was made to operate using this dimension. That Lord, you will open this up to me. That I will walk in this reality. It will not be a myth. I walk in this reality. Oh Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, we give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I know, I know that, I know that you know Jesus. Can I explain, can I explain to you that you don't know all of Jesus? That's, that's. Sorry, can that person go on me, please? Can someone please help me meet Madam MC? Thank yes, you. Yes, please. Yes, go ahead. I know you know Jesus, but I want you to understand that there's a familiarity we can have with Jesus that makes us shortchange ourselves in the complete package he has given us. The woman with the issue of blood got a restoration like none other because there was a different way she connected. The same Jesus everybody else was touching. There was a difference with how she approached him. I know you know Jesus, but do you know Jesus? Every time we approach him, we should approach him with fear, with reverence. That this same person gave his life for us and there's so much more that he wants us to be able to access. But you can only do that when there's a reverence. When you don't just treat him as someone, I've known you all my life. Yes, I know you can do all these things, but we don't pack him in a place. And that that is not how he wants to be known. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Lord, I ask that more than these words, oh God, that you will ignite something in this people's heart, in our hearts, oh God, myself included. You will ignite something in our hearts, oh God, that does not take you for granted. So that we can walk in the light of divine health, the way, the original way you planned for it to be. That physically, that mentally, our spirit, soul, body, that it's immersed, that it is completely in sync with you so that we can walk in that wholeness that you call health even as our souls prosper. That your name alone may be glorified and the blessings ours. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Um, Romy, put your camera up before I come and find you in the house. <laughs> Showing us all our kids. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tosin. Powerful message. Guys, can we appreciate my brother on the chat? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Akudo. Thank you, Mr. Tosin. That was a profound word. Can we appreciate them? That was a profound word. Um, we apologize for the scripture challenge, Minister Tosi and um, Tamakuru. Sometimes we'll be having network issues. Um, I'm glad that you're, you're now on my bandwagon when I'm saying, Victoria, I need my scriptures now. <laughs> Minister Tosi, you are now on my bandwagon. <laughs> I need my scriptures now. So that's good. That's good. Um, thank you for the me wonderful message, guys. A few announcements. A few announcements. Tomorrow, we're going to be rounding up this month with a night vigil. Uh, Victoria, do you have scripture shared by any chance? 
put up the flyer for the night vigil tomorrow. Every month we organize a vigil to round up the month. This vigil is going to be a very interesting one. A very, very, very interesting one. And I want you guys to plan to attend, not just attend alone. I want you guys to plan to invite your family members that um, this topic will pertain to them. The vigil is actually themed the restoration of divine health. The restoration of divine health. Um, Akuru and I were talking about the theme for the vigil and the Spirit of God dropped this last minute. What he intends to do through this vigil is an appointment in Zion whereby our health will be restored. We've had various teachings this month. Minister Yemi went first. I went next. Um, Reverend Joe Oraka went. And then Adam Akudo, Minister Tosi, has blessed us tremendously today. All of those teachings will not be wasted. We're going to tap into it. And we're going to be calling on the God of this commission to meet us tomorrow. It's going to be a time in God's presence. The time is 5 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. That is um, 9 p.m. Ghana, 10 p.m. Nigeria and West African countries, 11 p.m. South African countries, um, 12 midnight East African time. I'm telling you guys, mark your calendars. We're going to have a great time in God's presence. Mark your calendars. I'm seeing a few people that are carrying prophetic graces on this altar. I'm seeing a few people that are carrying prophetic graces. Let me move on to the next announcement. We are going to be coming to South Africa. South Africa, get ready for us. The first week of December 2024. We can't wait to be in South Africa. We are getting ready to be in South Africa. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence. Um, we're going to be concluding some details so that we can start planning by the first week of November. If you are South African, we need your help to put together the program. It's going to be more than a one-day program. It's going to be a three-day program. We're going to have a program for the women. We're going to have a program for the tribe members and some other stuff that we're planning as well. So please stay tuned. Our admirable country leader, Madame Lesejo, will be hosting us in South Africa and we can't wait to be there. All right, one more announcement. Put up that flyer for me, my dear. The flyer for the outreach ministry. If you are a tribe member and you live in Lagos, Nigeria, we need your help this weekend. We need your help this weekend. Give me that flyer, Victoria. A part of our initiative as marketplace ministers is to do outreaches, Christian outreaches, as inspired by the Spirit of God. We have a very able Madam Messi who has been holding that um, department down under her leadership. It has thrived and doing very well. I'm actually encouraging as many people as possible on here to, to be a part of the outreach department. I'm getting distracted because I'm seeing a few things in the spirit and I don't plan to minister. If you if you oh, if you have a need, please meet us at the night vigil tomorrow. I I, I can't take time out to do that today. We are calling for men. We need men 
in our outreach department, especially in the countries where we have outreaches. We are calling for men. We have women in abundance. We need men. The reason why we are calling for men for this particular outreach is because um, the outreach department will be going to the prison for young males, um, juveniles, I believe is what they are called. Juvenile delinquents, what we call them in the US. Um, and this is male, young males, young males. We don't want to just send a, a group of women to minister to young males. We believe that young men can be better pulled up by other young men. And so if you're a man, you live around the Lagos area, or you can make a sacrifice, a one-time sacrifice to be in Lagos, please support this initiative. I'm doing this for God. Please support this initiative. This is what we do as marketplace ministers. Please. So we are calling for men. Um, if you know anybody who would like to be a part of what we are doing. Oh my God. There's somebody on this altar. You are asking God for a miracle. I'm going to pray for you very briefly. I can't shake it. I can't shake it. I don't know what your miracle is about, but that anointing is on this altar. You're asking God for a miracle. You're asking God for a miracle. Oh my goodness. From what I'm seeing, it's a very desperate situation. You're desperate. You need God to move on your behalf or you don't know what you're gonna do. You need God to move. Guys, can we just raise a cry for this person in one minute, please, please. Can we begin to intervene for this person, begin to intercede for them? This person is asking the Spirit of God for a miracle. I don't know what area, what direction it is, but the anointing is present on this altar. Can we begin to pray? Zavisa coparusche ke pendra da bosso compra vala bos. Ji de pe felisa camra vala bosso compra vite ben de. Musi te pre felisa tu compra vala bosso de li. Ponda da dosso compra vala bosso da palina sambra ko de de si si ti asu te kasa da 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 da. Asu te de 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 the <laughs> Okay, I see, I see in the spirit. I see that somebody whose family member is battling the spirit of death. There's somebody on this altar, your family member is currently battling the spirit of death. If you are willing to identify yourself, we will pray with you. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. This is a life or death situation. You're trusting God for a miracle. That anointing is present on this altar. Please, we have to be in a hurry. All right. Best. Victoria, okay. put that flyer back up. I'm not done with that flyer. Put it back up. Put it back up. If there is nobody that can identify for it, I'm going to just... Okay. Yeah. I want to pray for... Person. 
I'm seeing that there's more than one person. There's somebody else, the Spirit of God says. That anointing is present. He is the God of impossibility. This is a life and death situation we're dealing with. Can you guys tell us what's going on very quickly? Very quickly. Uh, well, uh, good evening, family. Yes, sir. Um, a wife, oh, Pastor uh, Godwin. Some... God, God bless you, sir. God bless you. What's going on? Um, yeah, my wife, um, she lost the mom uh, somewhere April. And after that, um, notice that every now and then when she dreams, you know, mostly about seeing the dead mom or some yes. other family this year brain and dealing with it and uh, myself I've been picking stuff and we are praying and trusting God so as God has revealed to you I believe that it's necessarily what um, what is happening so God bless you for okay thank you sir. God bless you dear, my dear what's going on my dear good evening sir good evening everyone so my bless cousin you. was um kidnapped um yesterday and in the process of fighting with them they shot him on the leg and then carried him away so like he's bleeding he's in pains and about to lose his life and then they're asking for so much money like 50 million naira. and we know that if we don't intercede or interfere i don't know he, he hasn't been released they're asking for 50 million Yes, sir. What way is he? What state is this? He's in the east. God. Guys, can we raise up? What's his name? Give me his name. Give me his name. I'm seeing I'm seeing a snake in the spirit, a big snake, a python. This is the um the cult that's responsible. Can, can you give me his name? What's his name? Barry, if you're speaking, you're muted. Oh, maybe we have connection problems. Does anybody know the Barry's person's name? Anybody know the name? The Barry, are you there? Oh my God. All right, guys, can we just pray one more minute before we pronounce a few things? Can we pray for this? Sorry, I, I, the network was, yeah, was bad. They knocked his, me out. What's his name? I didn't get the question. Sorry, sir. What's, what's your cousin's name? What's his name? I'm here, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. What's the name? The name. The name of the person that's going through this. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can anybody else hear me? Yes, can hear you, uh, Minister Ma. I think yes. it's from her side. Okay, yeah. Madam E, what's the name of your cousin? What's your cousin's name? Oh my God. Does anybody know the Barry's family well enough to identify this person? Yeah, his name is Ujam. 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 U -G yes, U -G -A -M. U -G -A -M. Yes. Guys, can we begin to pray for Mr. Yujan? Can we begin to bind the spirit of death? Can we begin to bind that spirit? Use your authority. 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 Malika, 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 Malika,
Okay, Madam Iberi, I'll text you on the side. I've seen a few things. I'll text you. Pastor Godwin, did I ever meet your wife when I was in Ghana? Yes, I did. I introduced I introduced her to you when we met. Yep. Okay, I don't recall. If it's okay, I'd like to speak to her this week. On Teams. We can organize a call on Teams. All right, that will be okay. Organize a call. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for being available to help your children for meeting us at the point of our needs. And so I step into my office as a priest of the Most High God and I bind the operation of the spirit of death over Ujam's life, over Pastor Godwin's family. I issue a cease and a desist in the spirit. We ask, oh God, that this miracle that they are trusting you for, there be a release, there be a release. I release that anointing in the atmosphere and I pray, oh God, that it will locate them, it will locate them, it will locate them, and not just them, but any other household seeking for a miracle. But Father, we pray for you, Jam. We ask that you preserve his life. I shut every door open, every back door open. I shut it down and I cut off the head of the serpent in the name of Jesus. We speak liberty, we speak liberty. Let him be released. Let him be released. Let him be released. Let him be released. And I ask that judgment be issued in the spirit against these kidnappers in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Let your justice prevail. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. I release you, Pastor Godwin, and your wife from the activities of the spirit of death. I come against it. I turn it back to where it came from. From wherever I was projected, I turn it back. I send it back to wherever I was projected from. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you, Lord. You've always met us at the point of our needs. Who are we? We're just your servant. Thank you for your merciful hand stretched forth towards your people. Thank you, Father. Let it be a 24 hour turnaround, a deliverance for you, Jam, for your Barry's family. A 24 hour turnaround in this story. Rebuke that devourer the authority in the name of Jesus, that the miracle working power of God be made available to these households. Thank you, Father, because you have won the victory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Iberi, please keep me posted on this case. Keep me posted on this case. Let me post it on this case. I'll send you some information that God is showing to us. Amen. 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 Amen.
Okay. Guys, please forgive us. Forgive us for that. We just had to quickly do that. We are calling for men. If you want to join our outreach department in South Africa, in Ghana, in Kenya, and in Nigeria, please reach out to Mercy. Mercy is the leader of the outreach department. She will be glad to respond and host you guys and and we'll be glad to have you guys. God bless you all. Tomorrow we'll see you at the exact time, 5 p.m. U.S. Eastern, um, 9 p.m. Ghana, 10 p.m. Um, Nigeria, 11 p.m. in East Africa, I'm sorry, South Africa, 12 midnight East African time. You invite someone, the Spirit of God will meet us at the altar to be the restoration of divine health. This month will not pass by before God repairs a few things in our bodies. God bless you all. Have a very nice evening. We look forward to seeing our folks in South Africa. And if you want to, if you've ever thought about coming to South Africa for holiday or something, or just to be a part of what we are doing, reach out to us. We'd love you to join us out there. You never know. God bless you guys. Have a nice day.